So hello there, it's uh, Adam here. Um, um, today we're talking about the brain uh, and, and what the different parts of the brain are. Um, so we're talking neuropsychology, you know, the, the combination of neurology and psychology. Um, um, the, you know, it, w w which, is, which is the science behind um, how our brains physically work and where we're mapping the connection between between physical processes and our minds um, and there's there's a lot of potential and knowledge that's locked in our heads and and figuring where everything sits um, it, it's not just interesting but can can sometimes be life-saving you know many people with with brain injuries have had their lives positively changed thanks to neuropsychologists and their knowledge of where a specific thing in the brain happens. Um, if you picture the brain or imagine it as a, as a, as a control room in a bank, uh, the different segments of it um, are, the, are the filing cabinets, the computers and even the people operating and organising everything. Now, um, although this analogy sounds a little bit childlike, it's a, it's a practical way of explaining what are in fact some incredibly complex processes. So, so with this video today, I wanted to try and explain um, some of those processes in, in simple terms. In, in the hypnotherapy field, as with psychology and psychotherapy in general, we, we are greatly informed by neuroscience and, and um, it helps to understand the fundamentals before exploring it further. And that's what I'm doing here um, um, within this, this video. This is actually going to be a, a primer video for me talking about the neuroscience of, of hypnosis specifically in a subsequent video. So the brain, and, and here's one I, I prepared earlier, um, um, the, the brain is divided into, into two hemispheres um, and, and um, they, they, they are connected and almost all the processes happen uh, within the two, um, the, the two halves together. Um, um, you know, uh, um, um, however, they they, they they sometimes focus on on different things. I, in general, the, the the left side of the brain, which um, um, the left side of the brain tends to deal more with speech comprehension, writing, and the like, while the the the, the right side tends to be um, more occupied with with creative processes, spatial ability, and artistic skills. But like I said, um, um, almost all processes happen in the two together. Um, so the brain itself is composed of of three um, th th three sort of main big parts, uh, um, all of which have have two lobes in. I've just realised that because there's a green patch here, um, um, the, the the green screen is. Uh, um, uh, it, 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 it's like there's a there's a hole going through the middle of the brain. Um, um, okay, let me hold it like this, um, and that might be uh, that might be a bit more useful. Um, um, so the brain is composed of three big parts, all of which have two lobes each, uh, one in each hemisphere. So we have the um, the, the 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 cerebellum, which um, is this sort of uh, this this part here. Um, um, where all of our movement is commanded, you know, body, limbs, eyes. Um, we have the brain stem, um, um, which is effectively our life support system, you know, breathing, heartbeat, blood pressure. And we have the, the cerebrum, okay? Um, I mean, this last one is where I'm going to be, what I'm going to be focusing upon today within this video. Um, um, you know, it controls roughly two thirds of the processes of the brain, um, including, including our, our sort of higher intelligence functions. So the, the cerebrum is where our speech, our thinking, our reasoning, our feeling, our problem solving, and that kind of stuff lives, um, um, and and so you know within the cere the cerebrum is then divided. I mean, I mean, you can see that some of it is is, is different colours. Um, um, uh, some of these areas are marked um, uh, on this particular model of the brain because I, I've been doing that for for some of the hypnosis research um, and some of the hypnosis neuroscience. I won't kind of be referring to to to, to those little kind of markings today. Um, um, but we have our, our frontal lobe. So um, um, 
these uh, these areas here um, alongside some some motor function the frontal lobe is responsible for thought attention mood behavior language uh, planning um, and, 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 and a lot more a lot a lot more um, um, in it in it, you can find the prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for, for decision making, uh, the regulation of feelings, um, and Broca's area, uh, which is responsible for, for language. And those are just, uh, uh, just to name a few. Um, the frontal lobes are the biggest parts of the cerebrum, um, taking approximately a third um, of the two hemispheres combined. Um, and and it's, it's believed that this is where we essentially become modern humans, you know, our, our working memory, um, our reasoning, some of our emotional control, our speech and motivation all come from this place. Um, um, you know, there's, there's there's a lot of argument about the importance of, of this area within within hypnosis um, because because executive functioning exists there. Um, um, there's been some some debate about the fact that um, the, the, the 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 frontal lobes are, are inhibited and we hand over executive control to to the hypnotist. Um, 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 but that's um, um, not necessarily true, and there's a lot of discussion and debate um, um, about that, which I'll cover in a subsequent video. So we also have our parietal lobe, um, which is basically our, our sensory system. Um, the, the processing of our senses happens, happens here alongside spatial mapping, coordination, and, and surprisingly, reading and understanding mathematics. Um, both um, um, understanding sensory output, for instance, you know, touch, temperature, pressure, um, um, visual he and hearing perception, and also um, um, navigating the body, you know, you know, judging sh size and shape and distance, um, um, as well as, you know, spatial mapping. They all occur in this, um, um, this, this, this part of the brain that sits behind the main frontal lobes. Um, um, the parietal lobe also deals with comprehension of signs, uh, for example, and, and, and hand preference sometimes has a say in which of the two lobes will be more active. Um, um, and, and further behind that, this sort of purple coloured area here, I mean, it, it's, it's not wholly accurate, um, I'm sp going back from this, um, um, this purple area, it, it, you see the, the, this yellow area at the back here, um, 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 is, is what we refer to as the occipital lobe, um, um, so, so, so mainly uh, this sort of round around the back part here. Uh, 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 on this, it's, it's the yellow part, but it, it's actually slightly more expansive than this, this yellow part here. Um, 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 mainly visual information is processed here. It, it happens to be the smallest of the lobes, accounting for roughly 12% of the brain, but it's, it's vital in its connection to um, um, other parts of the hemispheres. Um, object color face recognition are all formed here as well as you know things like determining size depth and and distance you know perspective um, and it also helps with, with 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 the processing of memories and responding to the outside world um, um, also the two the two images from our our two retinas within our eyes are transformed into one concise picture thanks to this part of the brain. Um, the, uh, the, 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 the final lobe is, is the temporal lobe, which tends to be sort of around, around here. Um, um, the, 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 this is where our, our, were you able to see that? Um, 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 around, around here. Um, 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 this is um, where our auditory input is, our long-term memory and some emotions are processed there. It also connects directly to the limbic system, which is responsible for motivation and, and emotion and learning. Um, the limbic system itself interacts with other parts of the brain too. It works directly with the, the temporal lobes. Um, but most importantly, however, this part of the brain makes sense of language, turning it just from sounds to coherent words and visual information. So um, um, what I need to do now is, is I need to crack open this brain, for want of a slightly better expression. 
um, and just show you. So, um, um, the, 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 the limbic system is, is, is the system in here, um, um, which, which, which contains and includes the, the, the system in here, which contains and includes, um, the hypothalamus, the thalamus, the amygdala, the hippocampus, um, the hypothalamus is the, the, the small part in, um, um, in the center of our brain that's responsible for maintaining unconscious functions and regulating hormones. Um, 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 and, and its task is sort of keeping homeostasis um, intact. That's a, a sort of consistent internal environment um, by helping us to, to recognize different stimuli and, and, it, and, and it orders solutions from, from around the body, for example. So that's the, 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 the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus, um, which, is, which, is, which is just in here. Um, this, is, this, this more central, slightly larger part is the, the thalamus. This little sort of button in here is the amygdala. And then just sort of attached to that there, we have the, the, the hippocampus. Um, but the hypothalamus, you know, for, for, for example, when we're hungry and our, our blood sugar levels drop, this alerts the, the, the hypothalamus um, who then release hunger hormones into our body. Um, um, which, which, which is one of its other vital functions. You know, it manages the hormones of pretty much everything, uh, determining when to release them and how much. Um, so like I mentioned earlier, the, the amygdala right in the center here is, is a cluster of cells in the, in the middle of the brain that's mainly responsible for, for emotions such as fear and aggression. Um, um, and the, the amygdala gets, gets referred to a lot during, dur during you know, w within psychology because, um, you know, a lot of psychological issues, um, both negative and, um, um, and positive, uh, you, you know, form, form this important part of the, 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 the limbic si the system. Um, um, you know, it, it's responsible or, or mainly responsible for emotions such as fear and aggression, for example. And it's where our flight or f our fight or flight response um, um, comes from, which is basically, you know, our, our body's reaction to critical situations. You know, you either face the object of fear or run away from it. Or, or freeze. Um, the the, the uh, amygdala also forms emotional memories and it works with the hippocampus in order for us to, to remember better um, um, in general. Um, so the, the, the thalamus, um, slightly more central part of the limbic system, um, this is like a, a, a relay station. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's like, a, like a relay station for all the sensory information. Um, um, except for smell and the part of our brain which which regulates sleep, um, the, the the thalamus sends and distributes information both between the cortex um, um, and and the brain stem as well as inside the cortex itself. And what's interesting is that the connection between the sensory organs of the body and the thalamus are are, are contralateral. And what that means is that, that they communicate with the opposite side of the body. So while the thalamus and the cortex um, themselves communicate with the same side of the brain. Um, the, 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 the hippocampus then, um, 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 just, just kind of sort of down here, um, um, the, the hippocampus is a small collection of cells that's located within the temporal lobe and it mainly deals with memories um, um, and it forms them um, organizes them, decides where in the brain each one goes. Um, um, remember, it it, it 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 does a process. It doesn't actually physically store um, memories, you know, or facts and events. It it, it recreates um, um, uh, memories and and understandings of facts and events. Um, but it also works with the with the amygdala to attach emotions to to to, to such things. Um, um, it doesn't store long-term memories. Um, it kind of helps decide which ones are worth, um, um, you know, kind of kind of creating importance to um, um, and, and, and how to reprocess them. It's also where new neurons uh, are made, uh, which is why it's one of the most uh, researched parts of the brain. Um, so, you know, the, the, the human brain you know, is incredibly complex and um, um, neuroscientists are still unraveling 
a great many of of its secrets and and you know it's part of our bodies that you know, it's one of the biggest enigmas that science has encountered and we currently seem to know more about the outside world um, than what happens there um, within the brain and how it, how it affects us um, we you know we've we've We've, we've arrived at some really groundbreaking discoveries and many more are close, especially with today's technology. And the different parts of our brains, you know, make us, make us human, um, keep us alive. Um, and, and importantly, um, um, you know, it separates us as individuals um, um, and, and kind of organizes and orchestrates where our consciousness lies. Um, um, and, 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 you know, still contain some of the biggest mysteries that we have in our world today. Um, so, you know, with, with all of that in mind, it makes sense um, for us as both humans, but, but also, you know, hypnotherapists um, and people interested in hypnosis to stay on top of the science regarding our brains. Um, you never know when, when the, the next big revelation is going to happen and how that's going to inform the way in which, which we work psychologically, um, neuroscientifically and so on. Um, so, like I said, at the top end of this, this, this brief video, I'm going to um, follow this up at some point with a video focusing on the neuroscience of hypnosis, you know, what parts of the brain relate to hypnosis and so on. Though, um, please don't go expecting anything conclusive, um, um, but, but the, this video is a primer for that. Um, okay, so that's it for now. Um, um, do subscribe to this YouTube channel, you get the latest updates, um, and do go visit my college website for information on our uh, and my, my online education programs and courses in the subjects of self-hypnosis, hypnotherapy, and for those already trained um, in the field of hypnosis and hypnotherapy, you know, we've got some advanced CPD courses and stuff, you know, both live and online, as well as our, uh, our development hub um, in there. Okay, that's it today. Many thanks. Goodbye for now.